Good evening. I welcome you to today's online facilitation. My name is Dr. Adigo Adijuni Amaoni. I am the course facilitator for EDF 113, Introduction to, to Psychology in Counseling. In today's facilitation, we will be looking at the relationship between counseling, guidance, and psychology. We are going to be defining what education is, what psychology is, what education is. We are going to be looking at the branches of psychology and then which branch you know, in psychology is related to counseling or education in general. Those are what we are going to be looking at today in today's online facilitation. Let me quickly share my screen with you as we move on. Yes, like I said, our course is CDF 113, Introduction to Psychology in Counseling, and my name remains Dr. Adegun Adejuni Omomi. Our main focus today is the conceptual definition of psychology. So what is, before we go to the definition of what psychology is and all that, and that surrounds psychology, I want us to quickly look at the learning outcomes. When I talk about the learning outcomes, I'm talking of what I expect you to achieve at the end of this interactive section. So after you have carefully studied this session, you should be able to define psychology, one, two, define education, three, define educational psychology, define guidance and cancer. Then state the relationship between psychology and guidance and Canceling. What is the relationship between these two? So let's go to what is psychology. See, generally, psychology is the study of mental processes of human behavior. That is the general definition of psychology. Some people will say psychology is the study of human and animal behavior. But when we are talking of behavior, we are looking at everything that has to do with behavior. And our behavior is as a result of our mental processes. So when we say psychology is the study of mental pro processes, we are talking of the way we think, how we remember things, our feelings, our expressions, our actions, you know, all of this is what, all of this component comes together to form behavior. However, before the general, you know, we talk about the general definition, we have psychologists in the past who have given us several definitions of psychology, but we will be looking at two tonight. The first one we'll be looking at is Denning Kuhn, 1990. According to Denning Kuhn, psychology is, is the study of human and animal behavior as a science. He's talking about covert and overt behavior. Now, when we're talking about covert behavior, we're talking about the inner behavior, you know, those behaviors that we cannot physically see, you know, that are hidden, that are private. And when we are talking about overt behavior, we are talking about the vis visible, visible actions that we can, you know, people express anger, people shout, you know, the fight, those are vis you know, visible actions that we can see. Also, we also look at Kenneth Clark, you know, Kenneth Clark also and his team the fine psychology says psychology is a term used to refer to the scientific study of behavior. Its scopes in, includes both observable behavioral processes like gesture, speech, and psychological changes, as well as assumed processes like thoughts and dreams. Let's move ahead. That is just, you know, I'm just giving us a view of what psychology is. And then what is Education. Remember, we are looking at the topic, the course is Introduction to Psychology in Counseling. And we know that counseling is a field in education. When we are looking at the application of psychology to counseling, then it is important that we look at what education is. We are going to be looking at three, you know, definitions or, or assumptions or belief of what education is. Education is that acquisition of desirable habits, skills, and attitude that enables a person to be a decent citizen. You know, that is education. You acquire skills, habits, attitudes that enable you to be decent 
citizen. You know, when we when somebody behaves in an unruly manner, you ask the first thing we tend to ask is, is this person educated? You know, because we expect that when you are properly tutored, when you have a form of formal education, whether formal or informal, you know, we will be also going as we go along in the course later, we'll be looking at all those aspects. So, you know, when you are properly groomed, then we expect a decent behavior. So education refers to the shaping or alteration, alteration of an individual behavior in order to achieve proper social adjustment. We are also looking at behavior now. You will look you, from this definition, you will be seeing that we are not looking at just you know, the four walls of a school, the teaching in the four walls of a school. That's not what we are looking at now. No, Umar 2011 was cited in Uzoka 20, 2018, said that education is a process where skills and information are transferred to the next generation in order to develop a person mentally, emotional, technically to be happy and valuable character in the society, in the social order. Now we understand that the, the purpose of education is for an individual to feel perfectly, you know, fit for perfectly and properly to a societal group or is or an environment. When, when our behavior deviates from the normal norms, then we people are bound to begin to think that, look, did this person receive any form of training or has this person even taken time to retrain him or herself? So let's look at the branches of psychology. Now we have looked at what definition of psychology is, and then we have looked at education. Now we'll be looking at the branches of psychology. Psychology is a broad course with, let, let me put it like, psychology, psychology is a big tree with so many branches, but I will just be mentioning a few here tonight. We have biopsychology, we have educational psychology, we have clinical psychology, industrial and educational psychology, social psychology, sports psychology, so many of it. You know, we have so many, I'm just looking at this few tonight. But our main focus now will be on educational psychology because as educationists, as counselors in training, educational psychology is that field of psychology that is actually applied in education, that, that, that applies to human behavior as relates to learning. Now, what is educational psychology? Educational psychology is the application of psychological findings to the field of education. It is the systematic study of an individual growth in educational environment. Also, we can educational psychology is a branch, branch of study that integrates the field of education and psychology. It means that it marries the two together. So the educational psychology is the study of training and teaching methods as well as their effectiveness effectiveness, you know. Now, when we're talking of educational psychology, we are talking about the application of psychological findings, you know, to the field of education. Why do we behave in certain ways? Why do some set of people learn? Why do others don't learn? How can we help those who are not learning to learn? All of these are true psychological experiment or observation to, to be able to identify why a child is behaving one way or why the other, other child is with. the normal behavior pattern. So when we understand psychology, when we have the basic understanding of psychology, we will be able to integrate it into education. So when we integrate basic psychological principle into education, we will be looking at educational psychology. So once the application of psychological principle to educational setting, put simply put, is educational psychology. Now, what is guidance and what is guidance? So guidance can be defined as the application of psychological principles and theory. You can see psych application, that is guidance of psychological principles and theories to enable the individual to know itself, understand itself, achieve self-actualization. Now, we are applying psychological principles to enable this person to understand himself. You know, you know yourself, you understand yourself, and then you are able to achieve self-actualization. When you know yourself and understand yourself, then you will be able to set goals that is achievable. And at the end of the day, we say you have self, you have achieved self-actualization. Why counseling is a talking therapy that allows people to discuss their problem with trained professionals in duties, either intended to overcome the same or to explore their thoughts comprehensive in a peaceful and safe ambience, you no know, environment. We have told us that guidance is the application 
why counseling is a talk therapy. And who do you talk to in a counseling session? You talk to a counseling psychologist. That is who you talk to. When people have issues, it could be individual, it could be group, it could be a family setting, it could be academic, it could be medical. You know, when you have psychological issues that you want to navigate around, you want to find solution or be able to navigate around, you talk to a counseling psychology. So we say guidance and counseling is also defined as a plan and organized activity aimed at assisting the training in better understanding himself and his ability, as well as developing his or her potential in order to solve problems and achieve psychological, social, educational, and professional capability, as well as achieve objectives within the framework of teaching. We have told us what guidance is, we have told us what counseling and now guidance are counseling because for us doing this course, we are counselors and trainer. What is guidance and counseling? And we have been told now that is a planned and organized activity, you know, aimed at assisting a trainee. A trainee is a counselor in training, a student and the undergraduate who is studying guidance and counseling. So better understand yourself because you need to have a basic understanding of yourself and your ability as well as de developing your potentials in order to be able to solve other problems. As a counselor, if you are not stable, if you don't, have, if you are not psychologically balanced, if you don't understand yourself, then you cannot help others. So now, what is the relationship between psychology, counseling, and guidance? Why are they interrelated? You now, basically, these the three fields talks about you know molding of human behavior. Psychology is telling us is the study of human behavior, and when we study behaviors in psychology, then we look at the aspect of counseling and guidance. All of this has to do with molding of human behaviors. You know, for us to have adjusted in adult or adjusted individuals, then these three works hand in hand. Psychology identifies the, you know, helps the counselor to identify the, the problem, you know, and guidance, you know, is the application of this psychological principle in helping this person to manage the issue with the problem well or to come out of it. So individual behavior is modified through guidance, counseling and psychology in order for them to understand themselves and be able to make wise decisions that will be favorable to them based on their understanding. In a counseling process, the counselor does not force his or her opinion on the client or the, or the counseling. The, the duty of the counselor is to listen carefully to what the counselee or the ears or client is going to, and then give several ways through which this person can overcome the situation or manage the situation. In providing guidance, the counselee, you know, looking at all options and angles that the counselors has assisted him or her in, picks which one best suits him or her based on that person's understanding. And usually there's a continuous follow-up to make sure that the person gets out of that problem. However, in the course of this, our to interaction, we have defined what psychology is. We have told us that psychology is the psychological and uh, scientific study of human behavior. We have been told what education is. We have been told what guidance is, what counseling is. We have also been told the field of psychology that deals with education, and that is educational psychology. We have been told that educational psychology is the application of psychological principle in educational setting in helping to modify behaviors or build behaviors that are acceptable in the society. We have also looked at the relationship between these three components, psychology, guidance, and cancer. And we have been told, you know, that these three work hand in hand, they are interrelated. These three basically mold, they study and mold human behavior. We cannot separate psychology from counseling and we cannot separate counseling from guidance. The three must go hand in hand for us to get a desired result. Now that you have gone through, you have listened carefully 
So today's interaction, I believe that by now you should be able to define what psychology is, you should be able to define education, and then you should be able to tell us the relation between psychology and education, and then the meaning of guidance and counseling. I have given us here four assessment questions, define psychology, what is education, what are the relationship between psychology and education, what is the meaning of guidance and counseling? If you're unable to provide adequate uh, answers to these questions, maybe you have written down and you did not get it, you can go over the video, continue to watch the video, read your course materials. You can also, and there are so many you know, online resources. You can go there, read to your understand, and then come back to answer the questions. When you have gotten the question, it means, are you able to answer all these self-assessment questions? That it means that you have the right understanding. You, you have totally understood today's concept. God bless you. Thank you for listening to me. And God bless you. Have a pleasant day. Thank you.